everybody. This is Diana from So Very Crafty, and we are here today to make this fantastic flat iron case. And what makes this really terrific is that it is heat resistant because we used one of two things. In this example, we used ironing board fabric. Yes, you heard that right, ironing board fabric. And this was fabric that I had left over from my ironing board project that I did a while back. And uh, you can get this at any sewing uh, store, any fabric store has it. Um, but today, uh, because I don't have any more ironing board fabric, I do have insole braid. And that's the kind of stuff that you use for pot holders and things like that. So we're going to use insole braid today for this project. But um, ironing board fabric works fabulously for this if you can't get insole braid. So either way, this project is made exactly the same way and we are going to make it today. So before we do, I'm going to ask that you subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up and let's get started making this fun and functional little flat iron case. So what do we need? We need about a half yard of fabric, not even a half yard really. And some insole bright or ironing board fabric whichever it is that you want. And you're also going to use a cam snap. If you're unfamiliar with cam snaps, cam snaps are these plastic snaps that are the easiest things in the world to install. And I'm going to show you how to do that later in the video. But we're going to use uh, some cam snaps here today for this project. Now the first thing that we're going to do is cut out our fabrics. I've already done that, but what we're really going to need to do is cut out two pieces of outer fabric that measure 18 inches long by 6 inches wide. So 18 inches long by 6 inches wide. The next thing that we're going to do is measure two more pieces of fabric that are 14 and a half inches long by six inches wide. Now, you don't have to use all the same fabric. You can use different fabrics if you like. It's completely up to you. I happen to have a lot of this fabric on hand, so I decided just to use all the same fabric. And you're gonna have one piece of insole bright or ironing board fabric that measures 14 and a half by six, and you're going to have one piece of insole bright or ironing board fabric that measures 18 by 6 as well. The very first thing that we're going to do is we are going to take our ironing board or we are going to take our long piece of fabric and we are going to round off the corners. Um, and that just gives it a little nicer look if we do. Now I have this little corner rounding ruler and I will put the link to this in the description box at the at below the video. And if you just click more below the video, it should have the link if I remember to put it in there. Um, but it's it's a nice little thing to have for rounding corners. You could use a plate, a compass, a jar, you know, whatever you happen to have on hand uh, to do that. So I'm going to take one of our friction heat erasable pens and I'm just going to use the two inch corner round and I'm going to mark right there, turn this around and you know it's going to be exactly the same on both sides. And then we are going to take our scissors and cut those out. And I have some Kai scissors here. And these scissors, um, I only recently got them. And they are the best shears that I have ever used. So if you get a chance to buy some Kai scissors, I would definitely 
do that. And I'll try to put the link, if I remember, um, in the comments or in the description box. So we're just going to round these off using scissors. Now we're going to match up our insel bright here. And we're going to round those corners as well. So there's that. And we're going to set that aside. Now we are going to focus our attention on these smaller pieces. And what we're going to do is we are going to set our insole bright or ironing board fabric, whichever you choose, onto our work surface. We are then going to place right sides up one of our fabric pieces, our 14 and a half inch by six inch fabric pieces. We are then going to place another 14 and a half by six inch pieces of fabric right sides down. So you've got three layers of fabric here and you're going to go over to the sewing machine and you are going to stitch along the top one quarter inch seam allowance. Now I'm not going to show this on video because it's just a straight seam. There's no reason to. But one quarter inch right across the top and that's it. Once you have done that, you're going to flip this right sides out and then top stitch along the seam line a quarter inch so it looks nice and professional. So I'm going to head over to the sewing machine and I'm going to do that and then I'm going to come right back and we are going to go to the next step. Now we're back and we have stitched just the top, as I said, flipped it over and top stitched along the edge. Now we are going to bring over our curved edge piece, our long piece, and we're going to do the same thing. We are going to place our insel bright on the bottom, take our outer piece and place it right sides up, Make sure these raw edges are together. Then we're going to take our 14 and a half inch piece, place it right on top, and again make sure these raw edges are matching, and then take our final round edge piece and put it right sides down on top of the stack. So you have now just a stack of fabric. And I'm going to take some Wonder Clips and I'm going to clip this. Now you could pin this if you wanted, but there's quite a bit of bulk here so the wonder clips really work better if you have those um, if not you can pin them you can use uh, binder clips that you use in the office or school um, whatever the case may be um, the clips really do work better for this project, quite frankly. Um, just because of the bulk. Now, once we get this clipped, We are going to go over to the sewing machine
and we are going to stitch all the way around our project, except we are going to leave an opening up here on the edge. And the reason we're going to leave this opening is because we have to turn this right sides out. So if we don't have an opening up here, um, or we could leave it at the bottom if we wanted, uh, we won't be able to turn it right sides out. So let's go head over to the sewing machine and stitch all the way around this and then come back and we'll go on to our next steps. Okay, here we are at the sewing machine and we are going to start right here along the side. Back stitch a bit and stitch all the way around. There we have it and we have our opening here at the top so that we can turn this right sides out okay we are back and now we are going to turn this project right sides out well actually first of all we are going to clip these corners just to the stitching but not through the stitching. And then we're gonna turn this right sides out. Okay, we have finally gotten this turned right sides out and we of course have this opening on the side that we need to close and the way that we're going to do that is we are going to turn in our raw edges so that they are e even with the seam and we're going to use our clips because clips really are the best thing for this, but you could pin if you wanted to. And then we are going to use ladder stitch. And ladder stitch is a hand stitch that's also known as invisible stitch. And basically what that does is it allows you to sew this seam closed without anyone knowing that you've had an opening there. Now I'm not gonna show you how to do ladder stitch here. I will show you on this sample one. Um, I don't know if you can see it here, but I use ladder stitch along this side here. Um, I don't know if you can see the hand stitching there, 
but um, that was ladder stitch and you can't even notice that it's there. But there are loads and loads of videos on YouTube to show you how to do ladder stitch, but I'm not going to take the time to do it for this video because I want this to be short and sweet. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we need to add our cam snap. And so we're just going to fold over our top here and find a good place. This looks like it's good enough. And we're going to place a hole because your cam snap uh, kit will come with an awl like this that will allow you to make the perfect size hole. Now you will have with your cam snaps these tack like things. You'll have a male side and a female side. So we're going to take our male side and one of our tacks and we are going to slide our tack right into the hole that we just made. Goes all the way through. We're going to place our male side right on top there. And then we have this tool, and it's a clamping tool. We're going to put, make sure that the black part is on the tack, and the clear part is on the male side, and we're just going to crimp. And what that's going to do is it's going to smoosh down that little pointy part of the tack so that it makes this, uh, so that it's sturdy it's all smooshed on there. Now we are just going to measure down and we can see right there is where we need to be and we are going to place our female side in exactly the same way. push our tack through, push our female side there, put our cam snap, crimp, and our snap is ready to go. All we have to do is close. And that's it. We have finished our neat little flat iron case in absolutely no time whatsoever. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this project and if you did give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and please head over to www.soberrycrafty.com for loads more sewing and crafting tutorials and um, check out some of my other videos that I have. I'm just getting started in the video world so I'm doing the best I can here. Um, hopefully I'm getting better, but please uh, give me a thumbs up and head over to SoVeryCrafty.com. Thanks, and I will see you next time. Bye!